Now, Port Elizabeth, uh, Utene, and other parts of the Eastern Cape uh, have hit the headlines this week after Sports, Arts and Culture Minister Natim Tatwa gazetted several name changes on Tuesday. Port Elizabeth will now be known as the Becha, and uh, Port Elizabeth Airport was also renamed Chief David Stirman International Airport. King Williamstown also got some new changes. But to tell us more, we're joined by author and political commentator Putumi Dabeni to give us a sense of the history. A very good morning to you. Thank you so much uh, for joining us on Newsroom Africa. A lot of people say that it was a long time coming, that uh, it was inevitable that PE would be known as Babeja. Warmer Township in PE was formerly known as Kabeja, but uh, lost its popularity as the area became more industrialized. Tell us more about uh, this name, and you know it's gotten so many people talking on social media. Give us some more expansion. Okay, good morning to you, and good morning to your listeners also. Yeah, I'm one of the people who, who think this has been long coming. If you remember, the process was actually started during even Mandela's administration. And then it was aborted. I wasn't sure why it was aborted. And then we just thought perhaps uh, there was something on it. But historically, I hear other people also, uh, funny enough, the, the, the part about the, the, the warmer township being the, called Gabecha, I know that it was called at the banks of Ikabeja. Ikabeja is actually the, the river currently known as Bakans River now in PE. It's one of the rivers that, that goes into the sea at the PE harbor. And um, historically, myself, I first knew of that name through the journals of Tiosoga when he came from Scotland and then he, he, he said he first preached at the banks of Ikabeja. And then uh, as came as E. K. Mkhai also in his book, Abandu de Suze, mentions it as one of the places that uh, most uh, uh, Amakosa used to go because he talks about how Amakosa used to go to the salt pans around uh, PE, uh, a process that used to be known as Ugunguha, which is, which is why that place became known as Inguha and then became corrupted into English as Guha. I, I personally think that uh, the, this process of uh, renaming, it's not even renaming to me, mm. is restoring the, the proper names that were changed by the colonial masters. I, I think it, 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 it does give us also a sense of uh, pride and a, a sense of uh, restoring our, 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 our heritage that was fractured by the colonialism. And also it teaches our children also and other people who think there was no history here in the Eastern Cape before the white people came. So it teaches people that by, we had history here. We know we, we, we had these places and we were living in these places and we had our names for it. So for me, I think it was long coming. I'm one of those people who agree that it has been long coming. With this uh, move uh, a long time coming, I, I want us to go through each and every one of these names, uh, well, if time allows us. Uteneg has also been changed, and uh, we know that uh, it, it's what the Khoisan used to call the area before these changes, as you speak about uh, a, a process of restoration and not entirely renaming. Yes, exactly. The, the Uteneg area uh, used, to call, used to be called by the name of Karyeha which is a Khoisan name, which is what now it's being restored back into. And then uh, they, I, in actual fact, the, the, the whole area, uh, you have places, the, the, the mountains they call Zubek. Uh, Ama, Amakosa themselves and the Khoisan used to call those mountains uh, uh, the mountains of Buba and then Ekhagaiwa. Uh, and then you have your, the river that, that begins somewhere around the which is called Swat Cops, and then uh, we used to call them Ikakewa. So I, for me, I, I, I think all these places, we should just uh, return them and restore their names back to where they are. I mean, uh, we can't have a, a, there is enough, for instance, in, a, in, a, in, in PE to, 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 to remember the, the colonial history. I mean, everywhere in PE, you get Donkin House, you get this, 
So I don't understand the people who complain that we are, at, we are trying to wash away the, the, the colonial history as if it didn't happen. It's actually our history that has been uh, washed away as if it didn't happen because everywhere you go in PE, the names is as if you are in England or you are in Wales or you are in Scotland. So I think this little bit of uh, restoration for me is overdue. And I understand people uh, who are a little bit concerned. You know how people, they don't like change. Mm. And they don't like change if they don't control it. And then they, there is that, that the element of the remnants of uh, people feeling that uh, the Western hegemony is being attacked. Of course, it is being attacked. This is the whole point of it. We are trying to balance things back to where they, they were or at least not where they were, but at least we get a little bit of balance so that we also and our children know that but these, these areas have got our own indigenous and native history. I mean, you speak about change being a difficult process and a balance of history here. What do you make of, uh, of those who are really concerned? It's not really just a, a white issue to talk about the name pronunciations. What is your analysis around that? Yeah, you know, I, that one, I don't even want to uh, dignify it. Because if you go, for instance, to, to the Scottish Highlands or to Wales, you find names that you can't even pronounce yourself. Even they themselves, some British from England, can't pronounce. But the charm of that is that they are uniquely, they are uniquely Scottish or Welsh. And then it's a reason why people love it. And then they feel like the tourists will go to the Scottish Highlands to places they can't they can come pronounce. We don't have to be able to pronounce everything that we, we are. But the truth of the matter is that that area where you are now around PE and the Jutenhek is the area that, that is still predominantly Kosa and the Khoisan people. So their names, how they call things, should be should be uh, pronounced that, that way, should be called what it is. The rest of us must just try and learn. I mean, I was not born knowing how to pronounce Vanderbilt Park myself and Kirenech, and we had to learn the hard way, actually, through the apartheid system. So if they themselves don't want to learn, I don't know what must we what, what must we do. So it, it, it comes back to this issue of a, a bad attitude towards uh, the other cultures and other names that you don't understand. So if you don't understand, they must bow to you. You must change them. If, uh, if people talk about uh, then it must be Kucha because you can pronounce that yourself. I mean, there's an element of, uh, I don't know, I don't want to, to be a little bit rude, but what I'm trying to say, uh, in, in Cape Town, for instance, if you go to Cape Town, there is a, a, a very rich affluent area, which is called Landano next to Hot Bay. Or it, that's, a, that's a Welsh name, and then originally the name, of course, is Landano. And then people who don't know how to pronounce it, they pronounce it Landano. And there's no big deal about that. Mm -hmm. We also know that uh, the Port Elizabeth Airport has been renamed after a Khoi chief who really made a tremendous strides in history. What do we know about him? Yeah, he, 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 he was uh, prominent in fighting uh, on the third and the fourth uh, frontier wars. You know, uh, we had about nine major battles which are called uh, frontier wars, or sometimes we call them the wars of dispossession, land dispossession. So Stuartman had, had brothers, they had a brother actually, which was called Charles. It's interesting how the two of them diverged because his brother uh, went to the missionary uh, that was founded by Dr. Van der Kemp in the Betterstorp and he became a preacher there. But he himself became militant and uh, was trying to restore the land of his people. And he, he was incarcerated in Robben Island twice and he escaped once. But then the second time they incarcerated him him again and then they, they took him to they banished him to Wales actually that's where he died but he, he was a freedom founder and he, he he used to fight with uh, with, with with other leaders uh, among other leaders in, in, in that say in that the third frontier war in particular the alliance of the Khoisan people and the Lambe people in, in, in particular warned them like literally like uh, the, the war is one of the wars that among other won against the British now, in trying to balance, um, you know, history and, you know, being really careful not to wash away the colonial history that you speak about in re restoring the African heritage and perhaps uh, also educating the, the new gener next generations to come about uh, where the country comes from and where the country's going, do you think we still have a long way to go 
And are there any other name changes that still need to take place? Oh, most definitely. I think we have a very long way to go. And uh, I mean, uh, the, the, the truth of the matter is that in the Eastern Cape towns, and almost all of them, the colonial history is the most prominent. Everywhere you look, you would actually think you are in Britain. And everything is called by that. So I do not understand this, this fear that now we're trying to wash away the colonial uh, uh, history. Because where itself uh, the Bankans River enters the, the, the sea, the, on, there's a hill there. And then that hill has got a, a very uh, popular uh, fort they call Fort Frederick. And you will, wa you will walk a little bit, and then there's banking houses. And then you go uh, down there on the library, there's a, 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 a statue of Victoria. We haven't taken those things out. We understand that they are part of, of, of our history. It, it, it happened and it happened. But all we are saying is that there should be a balance of how we, we handle things. And historically, there has to be a still to, to, to restore a sense of dignity also on the indigenous people that live on the, on, on, the, on, on those areas. So there is a lot. I mean, uh, King Williamstown itself, which was founded uh, as, a, as a colonial uh, capital of military capital by, by Smith, Henry Smith, is being changed to a conch, which is what Amakos uh, usually uh, call that, that place anyway. You no, know? very few people call it uh, uh, King Williamstown. Mm. And then you have. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, the Sunday River itself that, that goes out uh, when you're going out from PE should just be restored to its original name, Mweba. And then you have what they used to call the, the, the border between the colony and the, and the Kosa people, which is uh, the Fish River. And my Kosa called that in Mubai, so I don't know why we shouldn't just call it in Mubai as it was uh, from the start. Uh, 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 so for me personally, um, I, I propagate that uh, those we can, we can change we must change to the, we must restore to their name. So, yeah, I think that's uh, that's the way to go. And unfortunately, we still have a long, long way to go. And then the, I hear people will talk about, uh, but there are better things we should be doing. We should yeah. be concentrating on the bread and butter issues. I mean, why should it be either or? Very Can't well. we do both? Thank you so much Can't for we your do time. Both? Unfortunately, I'm going to have to interrupt you there. We've run out of time. Thank you for your views. Uh, political commentator and author of The Broken River Tent, uh, Mputumi Ndabeni, giving us a sense of the history and the significance behind the name changes in the Eastern Cape.